So question four, it says, um, it asks, what force must be exerted on the master cylinder of a hydraulic lift to, to support the weight of a car? Um, okay. Um, I, I will admit really that this phrase, um, master cylinder is not familiar to me uh, your textbook might cover it but knowing the um knowing the 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 typical arrangement of a hydraulic force multiplier setup this is what i'm going to guess okay and the question wording does give you a little bit of a hint as well it gives you the parameters of master cylinder uh, that has some smaller diameter. Let me call this D1. And it says second cylinder or maybe secondary cylinder has a larger diameter. So this is what I think is the setup. The hydraulic setup for the second cylinder would be you have this cylinder, which itself is supporting a platform. And on top of that platform, you would have something that you are lifting like a car. And this cylinder is connected by hydraulic arrangement by, um, by a, a, some, a, some sort of pipe that's connecting one end to the master cylinder. And the thing that provides the force multiplier is the fact that these two cylinders have different diameter. And um, we have something called the Pascal's principle. Uh, it, in short terms, it in the shortened abridged version, it says that when you look at pressures here and pressures here, that they have the same pressure. Um, you do have to be careful with exactly uh, the details. Like if these two things are at different height, then there's a pressure difference that comes from the height and so on. But it says in hydrostatic equilibrium that any change in pressure in one part gets transmitted to here. Now, these two being same pressure is, um, is significant given that these two areas are different. Area of the master cylinder will be different from area of the secondary cylinder. And um, and so you and you have this definitional relationship between pressure, cross-sectional area, and force. That pressure is given by force per cross-sectional area. Uh, Pascal's principle tells you that um, what you are keeping constant between these arrangement is the pressure. So when you have different area, that will uh, imply different force for the equilibrium condition. So, so that's the setup we have, and it's the, that's the setup I'm guessing we have. <laughs> Again, I'm not totally familiar with the phrase master cylinder and second cylinder. But um, assuming this is right, let's uh, just continue on and um, write down an e e expression that um, that gives us a way to connect our unknowns to known quantities. So since we have uh, this uh, relationship that pressure um, I, uh, pressure under some condition is equal to force un under some condition divided by area, and we know the pressure will be the same in these two different situations. Let me just say, um, let me set up an equation using that. We can say, um, we can say that force at the master cylinder, 1, divided by area of the master cylinder is equal to pressure at that uh, location. Um, and that's equal, going to be equal to the pressure at the secondary cylinder, which will be force at the secondary cylinder divided by area at the secondary cylinder. So this is the relationship we have, force over A1 is equal to force 2 over A2. And I think we have enough information to get force 2. We are being told the mass of the car resting on the secondary cylinder. And um, so, you know, there are other complications like, okay, what's the weight of the cylinder assembly itself and all that. 
but we can approach this like with a gauge pressure. What we are carry, what we care about is the difference from the normal circumstance. So the force here that we care about, given the mass of the large car, the force is the weight of the car, mg. So that's the force that, in addition to everything else that's always there, that you need to support. Um, and let's see, I have expression for A2, because uh, given D2, I can write this down as uh, pi over pi times D2 over 2 squared. And I have expression for A1, similar as A2. So I think I can solve for F1 here, and that'll be our answer. Let me just uh, solve for that. Um, so solving for F1, I have F1 is equal to ratio of the areas, A1 over A2 times F2. Let me just plug in MG. MG. And looking at this ratio, I think it'll be simpler for me um, not to explicitly write down this pi and 2 because these numerical factors will be common in both of them. So pi and uh, 2 so from numerator and denominator will cancel out. So what remains will be the ratio of the diameters. So d1 over d2 squared is what that area ratio will reduce down to. So let me work out the uh, number there, d1 over d2 squared times mg. The, um, I'll, I'll just plug in the numbers. So I'm going to just plug in the diameters in both in centimeter, then the centimeter will cancel out. I won't have to worry about the units. So 24 divided by 3 squared times mass 2100 kilogram times g, 9.8 meter per second squared. And the centimeters in these numbers will cancel out, and the remaining units are basic SI units, so I'll get the basic SI unit of uh, force, uh, Newton. So I think I can put this in as a scientific notation. 1.317, 1.317, e, 10 to the power of 6. Uh, that should be recognized way right now. Um, ah. I made a mistake in plugging in the numbers <laughs> because 24 is my D2. It's not my D1. <laughs> That's what that is. Okay, so it should be 3.3 .3 divided by 24. Okay, That's the mistake I made. This is D1. This is D2. So 322 Newton. Okay, that, that makes more sense. You know, it's supposed to be a simple machine. It's a false multiplier. You want to apply less force than what you would need to if you're just directly lifting up the car. So 